Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Devosa Argonautic Loomis BS Automatic 300 meter with the white dial and comparing it to my Rolex Submariner 124060. So MSRP on the Submariner is $9,100. And the Devosa is $1,029. So let's look at the Rolex first and then we'll talk about the Devosa. So we have a flat sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, rated to 300 meters water resistance, has the Rolex 3230 automatic movement, 70 hours power reserve, rated to minus two plus two seconds. Now a solid end links, male end link, solid links, held in place with screw pins. We do have male end links here. We have the glide lock clasp. It's a milled clasp with the safety clasp there. It's all milled. It has a glide lock on the fly adjustable system. And the dimensions of the watch, 48 millimeter lug to lug. I believe tip to tip with these male end links is around 51. I don't have that measurement written down, but 48 tip to tip here. 40.5 millimeter bezel diameter. The case is a little bit uh, more narrow than that, a little bit smaller than that. You see that the bezel is proud of the case. And we the thickness is 12.5 thick. Case back to that flat, flat sapphire crystal. 21 millimeter lug width and it does taper down very nicely to 16 millimeter. Seven millimeter crown, a signed screw down crown. And this watch weighs in at 148 grams. The Devosa, we have a hardened steel bezel insert. Uh, also the Rolex is 904 L stainless steel. The Devosa is 316 L stainless steel. The Devosa is all polished. The Rolex is a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces. You can see the case side is polished. <laughs> well, mine's quite a bit scuffed up, but yes, it is polished. The sides of the bracelet are polished. And the Devosa is all brushed, as I mentioned previously. We do have a signed screw down crown here. 300 meters water resistance on the Devosa. Flat sapphire crystal. And then this is a hardened steel bezel insert. The BS stands for Beyond Steel. They state that it's almost as hard as a diamond, so very scratch resistant, and it will not shatter like ceramic if it takes a hard hit. Flat sapphire crystal with AR coating on the underside. I believe the Submariner is AR coated as well. So we have solid end links, solid links, held in place with screw pins, and then this is a stamped clasp. The fold over is stamped. This portion is stamped. And this uh, friction fit there. The Submariner, the clasp is kind of like a cam system, so it's not exactly a friction fit. And this portion here is milled. Yep, milled clasp there. We have a um, engraved case back here. And then we do have three micro adjusts. I'm sorry, it's actually four micro adjusts, but three of them are usable. That fourth one you can't use with that dive extension in there. It uh, interferes with that. And then you can just pop it out. So this does have a dive extension and the glide lock on the Submariner also acts as a dive extension. That's why it's so long and has so much adjustment in there. So it's kind of like a dive extension as well as a micro adjust. So 300 meter water resistant, and this has a helium release valve. The Submariner is not, but both rated to 300 meters water resistant. All right, let's talk about the dimensions. So this is a larger watch. The tip to tip on the fixed male center links, 57.5. Tip to tip, or lug to lug, 51 millimeter. Bezel diameter is 43. And the bezel is a little bit proud of the case, not by much. So the case is a little bit smaller than that, 43. 13.5 thick, 
22 millimeter lug width and it tapers down only to 20. I'd like to see it going down at least to 18. 22 to 18 would be nice or 20 down to 16. Well, 20 would be too small. So I think 22 is good there, but I don't like the small amount of taper. Seven millimeter signed screw down crown. And this watch is uh, quite the hefty watch. It weighs in at 186 grams. So quite the hefty watch. Uh, so if you like a little bit heavier of a watch, then uh, this watch may be for you. For my six and a half inch wrist, I prefer the Submariner. So here's a look at them side by side. So yeah, the Devosa is a little deceptive because the bezel is the same color as the case. It doesn't look quite as big as what it could, but it is definitely 2.5 millimeter larger in diameter and it is one millimeter thicker, which uh, yeah, you can kind of see that here. So let me get both of these on wrist and then we'll, oh, we'll check out the loom as well. Well, speaking of the loom, let's zoom in on the Devosa. And you can see that this has tritium gas tubes, which the Rolex does not. So these tubes will be illuminated for, I think it's 20 years. Uh, T25 tritium is a radioactive um, material. And uh, there's a gas in there that interacts with that. And uh, that's what gives off the loom. So in the loom portion of this video, um, you'll definitely see the Rolex will be a lot brighter initially, but then after maybe six hours or so, you'll be able to see the loom on this better than on the Rolex because the Rolex will die out here. And we have a nice engraved dial and applied indices. Date at 3 o'clock. So the loom pip, the second hand, and then the um, 3 o'clock loom pip there is... BGW9 loom. I guess I didn't uh, charge this up before the video, but now you can see the second hand moving there. This has a Fleeta SW200 movement, uh, 38 hours of power reserve and accuracy. I think it's like plus 10, minus 10, somewhere around there. It's not as accurate as a Submariner, but again, it's uh, one ninth the cost. So keep that in mind. And then let's take a closer look at the Samariner here. You see the nice applied white gold indices. Plain back black dial, smooth dial. Uh, no texturing there. Just a real nice iconic watch. And then the uh, indices here are platinum filled. But we do have the loom pip there. And uh, we'll experience a nice chromolite loom here in a moment. Uh, both watches are Swiss made. So we're just different uh, tiers of luxury, I guess you could say. All right, let's uh, pause the video and check out the loom. All right, so the Devosa is obviously on the left, and we have the Submariner on the right. And you can see the UV light does interact with this loom. It looks really bright, but once I turn it off, um, you can see, well, for me, by eye, I can see the second hand, the 3 o'clock indice, and then the loom pip. I can barely see the rest of the indices in the hand, but as your eyes adjust to the darkness, you'll be able to see the loom uh, better on the Devosa. So it doesn't look like what it looks like on camera here. And then uh, the loom on the Submariner is it's amazing. I uh, can't complain with that loom. So just a quick look here, even though on camera the Devosa loom is brighter than what it looks like by eye. All right, that will conclude this video. As always, Thank you for your time and thank you for watching.